California's racial demographics are changing quickly. So what impact could it have on that state's future? Yeah, we got to talk about it because the SF Chronicle just dropped a huge scientific, Ooh. algorithmic, Ooh. interactive map called Wee. Charts Show Extremely Detailed Look into California's Changing Population. Andrew, look at these circles. You've got white, you've got black, you've got American Indian, Asian, Pacific Islander, and Hispanic. However, I will be honest, the only bubbles that seem big are essentially the white bubbles the black bubbles the asian bubble and the latino bubble mm. so those are your major demographics however andrew i will say that some trends are clear white people are moving out of california mm -hmm. and latinos and asians are moving into california or could it also be that white people are mixing into california make sure you like subscribe and turn on your notifications and real quick what you know what else is a product of like different things mixing together Small ass sauce. A, uh, we like to call it a Chinese chili oil with Italian sensibilities. It goes on smooth. It's made with real truffle, and you can order it right now, smallassauce.com. Please, uh, please check out the Instagram if you want to see all the content we've been making with it. And guess what? I think it would go well on ethnic food from all of these groups. Yeah, it goes To be great. honest, incredibly versatile sauce. Goes perfect on tacos, especially guacamole, and I would say al pastor, like something on the more oily, spicier side. And then it goes great, obviously, on Chinese food and... I guess if you count pizza as white food. Anyways, uh, let's keep it moving. Um, on a macro level, Andrew, let's be honest here. The white group, the black group, the Asian group, and the Latino group, Andrew, they have like a different relationship with California, right? It aren't white people more like, uh, California, here we come. California. California. You know, yeah. surf. More surfer bros, Barbie, Ken, Malibu, Ooh, California, dude. <laughs> Californication. Black people, California love, Dr. Dre and Tupac. I'm not going to do the impression. California dreaming. Uh, right. I step on stage, I hear a hoochie screaming. Uh, uh, Asians, they probably got two songs that I'm, because we're more familiar with the Asian world, Andrew. Back in the day, it, it was a uh, top off the ride. There's a party going on in every corner. That's why I got to be in California. But, but then the new one is probably like, uh, 88 Rising. The last night I lost all my patience. I, I think we're also forgetting about the From Asia song, though, which would probably be more defined by K-pop. I don't know what song that would be. but anyways. Super Shy, for sure. Right. <laughs> it, it, right now, I'm telling you, you play Super Shy in a club, it's lit, in the Asian club, at least. Um, and then the Mexicans, Andrew, they have a ton of, uh, or, or Latinos, they have a lot of mariachi music. Yeah. A lot of uh, reggaeton is really popular in yeah, California. Obviously, the reason why you, uh, you know, it's common to refer to the Hispanics in California as Mexican. Obviously, they're not all Mexican, but most of them are. Yes, 31% of the entire state of California is Mexican. And the next two biggest groups, I believe, Guatemalan and Salvador and Andrew, are coming in at like 2 to 3% yes. of the total state. So I, California is a, is a very, very Mexican state. Yeah, there's quite a bit of Salvadorans. I used to work with a lot of Salvadorans over at uh, Nordstrom when I used to work there. Yeah, you know what's really interesting, Andrew? This study is very granular because they targeted 100 different white groups, 58 black groups, 41 Asian groups, 31 different Pacific Islanders, so it matters if you're Samoan, Guamanian, Micronesian, and 22 Hispanic groups, and 1,000 American Indian or Alaskan Native tribes. So, Andrew, the, basically, this study is incredibly what they call in science granular. They have it down to the specific type of white, Andrew, whether you're English descent or you're German. David, you know what else is granular? Is small ass sauce. There's actually gran grains at the bottom that you have to mix up anyways. Shameless plug, but yeah, let's keep it going. David, I guess this is really interesting for people because a lot of people like to talk about California. We used to live in California. Um, the changing demographics. I mean, pretty much the ethnic populations are growing. The what is known to be white population is slowly decreasing. I had to get out of there. I'm moving to Arizona or Texas or Florida. I'm it's, getting it's, out it of there. It's so funny. They call that white flight. I think that's like the weirdest term to, because it's like white people flying out. Right, right, right. I mean, I guess it, it's, yeah, white flight is a term that was typically typified, I want to say in the 60s, 70s, 80s, talking about leaving the city to go to the suburbs, yeah. right? 
Uh, should we go look and focus a little bit more on the breakdown of Asians here? Yeah, I mean, this is what this uh, channel primarily focuses on. You know, we just had to give you the macro big picture view. I think maybe something that was interesting real quick, once we take it back to the bird's eye, Andrew, was how low the African-American population was. Mm, I, I saw a lot of comments about that, yeah. Yeah, uh, Cal did you know that California was only 4% black American? Yeah, but I, I, does that including people of mixed black heritage? Because I think there's a lot of like mixed people in California, but I guess people who purely identify as only African American, I guess, I guess it is that small. I didn't realize it. I thought there was more because we lived in LA. LA has quite a few, the Bay area, but maybe outside of those areas, not that we much. We play a lot of basketball guys. I'm telling you the court ain't 4% black when you're at the basketball, when you're yeah, at yeah, LA yeah, fitness at 24. Um, I'll say this, the largest ethnic Asian group in every county, let's take a look at this, Andrew. So primarily, uh, you got Filipinos out in more like Inland Empire, more in like Central California, near San Diego, it's very Filipino. LA is very Chinese. Um, the Bay Area is extremely Chinese. And then Hmong is up there by the Fresno zone, right? More in uh, Northern California, like even above the Bay, um, as well as in Fresno, I'm sorry. And then... Yeah, actually, uh, this is a really interesting map. It doesn't it kind of go to show you that it makes sense. Chinese are primarily in the Bay Area, L.A. Filipinos are big everywhere else. And Indians are really big in a county called Madera. Mm. I didn't even know that. Um, let's take a look at California's Asian American population in 1980, shifting over to 2020. As you can see, the Bay Area is getting way hotter of a zone, and as well as uh, LA, specifically more like San Gabriel Valley, and Orange County probably saw the biggest jump. Right, right, right. Um, what do you think about Orange County, Andrew? A lot of people are moving there because they want to get out of LA because Orange County is a little bit more... Um, you know, more straight laced. No, it's you, less you metropolis too. It's going to be less packed. It's less dense. It gives you a good kind of uh, in between of suburban and urban. You know, LA is very much a city. It's like an urban sprawl. But I think OC is even a little bit more manageable. I've heard why. from a number of our friends, Andrew, uh, that they were saying, you know, if I ever had to move from where I'm at, I would move to the OC. I've started to hear that a lot in the and, past and five years. Let me tell you this the OC, it does run by slightly different rules. And you know what's interesting enough? OC is also the one uh, district that is Vietnamese dominant ethnically for Asians mm. in the whole state of California. It's the only one where that's the largest Asian group, Asian alone group. And I also heard it's like maybe more Republican too. Yeah. No, it's nice. I mean, you're not going to... It's, it's a It's mix. not going to be the city. It's not going to be the city there, right? Um, somebody, let's go to California's with Asian ancestry, Andrew. Um, it goes Chinese for East Asian at 1.8 million. Then we have Koreans at around 600,000, Japanese at 480,000. But interestingly enough, Andrew, the Japanese group was the most likely to declare that they were mixed with something else. Right, right, right. A uh, lot of mixed Japanese. And, and they're mixed with, they said everything from white to black to Islander to Samoan to uh, obviously Pacific Islander because there's a lot of Japanese in Hawaii that mix with the Hawaiians there as well. And then we have Taiwanese that got counted as a separate group, Mongolian and Okinawan. So they're, they're that granular, Andrew. They separated... Okinawan out, out of Japanese. 2,000 Okinawans? I didn't know that. Um, Andrew, amongst the Southeast Asians, we have Filipinos coming in at 1.7 million. Vietnamese at about 800,000. And then it goes Cambodians at 120,000. Hmong at 110,000. Thai, Laotian, Indonesian, Burmese, Malaysian. Yo, that's crazy how few Thai people there are in California and how many Thai restaurants there are. Right, like even if you put Thai and Lao together, because I know that a lot of Thai... Uh, Thai restaurants are actually run by Lao families. You're saying that Thai restaurants are still just way overrepresented. Yeah, and I wonder if the Thai, could you count as multiple people if you're a Chinese Thai person? You'd probably count yourself as Thai. I'm I would assuming, say so because the Thailand. Chinese Thais that I know, even though they look Chinese, they mostly just speak Thai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, moving on to South Asian, Andrew. Indian came in in California at about 900,000. Then Pakistani came in at 75,000. Nepalese, Sri Lankan, Bangladeshi, Bhutanese. Mm. Um, as you can see, the jump in certain counties like Santa Clara County was tremendous in terms of where the growth is at. You know, the, the, the extrapolated trends, whites went way down in Santa Clara County. This is a particular county in the Bay Area. Um, moving on, Andrew, what do you think about California being 31% Mexican? Man, that's a lot. That's I mean, why the food, the Mexican food is so good and so cheap there. Yeah, I have been told by even Mexicans that they they just love the food in California. I, yeah, I mean, you could see it. 
obviously, like you roll by, there's, I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, yeah. even a lot of, obviously, a lot of California's names are in Spanish. So, obviously, that's... Hey, shout out to Lolo Felix. That was the California anthem. Obviously, I'm not saying that's representative of everybody. I'm just saying that had the most hits on YouTube. And he's like, Es California, vatos hermanos. Um, English and German Californians come in second. Uh, and then 9%, 9%, and then 8% Irish. So, that's how the white breaks down. Mm. Are you surprised that white people even knew what their genetic makeup was? Because I found that a lot of white people don't know. I guess German, English, Irish is not a bad guess, though, because those are the primary, probably white bloodlines in yeah, America, I mean, right? They probably just went with what they mostly are primarily, yeah. Um, moving on, Andrew. Did you know that San Francisco County is 22% Chinese? Whoa! SF County. You know, when you go land at SFO, which is the airport... There's a bunch of Cantonese people working at the airport, which is not what you see at other airports. Yo, everywhere, everybody from like security to the TSA to the janitor to yeah. the people working at the sushi. They're like thing, all Chinese or like Filipino. The, They're all Cantonese or Filipino. That's it. Yeah. It's that, crazy. That, that's it. That is a good point. Um, this is another map, Andrew, from the SF Chronicle, saying that Sacramento is the most similar demographically to the Midwest. That's so basically, they were assigning different counties in California like a, a relative culture out on the mid-coast or the, on the east coast. And they said that LA and SF are obviously more like the northeast, but Sacramento was more like the midwest. Interesting. Yeah, and they said um, obviously northern California, Andrew, is more like the south. Oh, more like no, no, not not NorCal, but like I'm talking about like northern, northern, like bordering like Oregon, Reddington, California. I think Reddington, and there's like yeah, there's there's those spots. Yeah. Um. Ultimately, Andrew, these were just the graphs from the San Francisco Chronicle. I got a couple quick thoughts though. I think it goes to show you that cultural impact, punching power, like your how much of a punch you pack per person per capita in soft power, it could really skew the way people think. Because let's say, for example, Andrew, you primarily follow uh, sports media entertainment, right? Sport uh, fields where African-Americans have a lot of representation in. You might think that California for sure is defined by like Tupac or Kobe Bryant. You might think that California is way more than 4%. And you would not think that California was that much Asian necessarily unless you're tapped in to the Asian enclave like AZN scene. Right, right, right. Because different groups, uh, regardless of their population ratio, in terms of how much they impact, I guess, like, the overall, like, pop cultural narrative could be more or less, right? Yeah, and everybody has their own bubbles, too. I mean, like you said, if you just consume, I mean, a lot of people think California is just part of Mexico, especially the southern part. And that's totally, like, you could easily say that, too. Right, right, because you're like, well, I grew up in, like, four towns that were, like, all Mexican. So, yeah. yeah. But then people, somebody be like, nah, dude, I'm from like Laguna beach. Uh, as far as I know, it's like all white dudes like me, like we're all chilling. So you, it's, it's really interesting. It's very, very diverse based on uh, whatever like fishbowl you're in. Right. I guess for me, Andrew, now that Chinese make up such a large proportion of the Asians in California, do you kind of wish like maybe they had a bigger cultural impact? Because I would certainly say that Koreans are way more culturally impactful than Chinese in a, like a soft power sense. Yeah, I would say seeing as how the Chinese outnumber the Koreans, and by the way, it's not like a battle for anything, but yeah, I would good. say like you guys, you, for you sure Koreans are punching above their weight as far as influence and soft power in California. Obviously, LA, as we know, the LA County has more has the most Koreans outside of Korea. That's significant, right? But for China, I mean, for Chinese, there is a lot of Chinese in between LA and then and NorCal but I think that Chinese people you know as we can talk about forever is like they don't fully come together of all the different provinces to do one thing you know we have the 626 night market which is heavily Chinese based but it's not really a Chinese th I mean it is well, a but, Chinese but, and also it, I mean it was based off the Xilin night market it is owned and run yeah, by yeah, Taiwanese it's people. actually inspired by the Taiwanese right but uh including all Chinese and I just think like I guess that the question might be like will Chinese use their numbers to build something that everyone else wants to take partake in. Because I, I think everybody wants to check out K-Towns. They're curious, right? All different races. Well, they seem like something worth checking out. Yeah. Like, it's going to be a fun time. You're going to see hot guys, hot girls, all types yeah, of things. But not, not everybody is, is flocking to the 626 to go see what that's about. 
even though the Boba game, 10 out of 10 there. Crazy. Yeah, I guess Boba is kind of that product that reaching that's reaching everybody. But You know what I think about Chinese people is like every country has a different level of like sort of consuming Western culture or how Western they want to be. Everybody, every Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Philippines, everybody's going to mix and match, right? And there's also some geopolitical factors that are out of people's controls. But like, I feel like Chinese people, they sort of build a lot of structures that they would have back in China, like really delicious restaurants and things like that, but they don't necessarily try to replicate Western things like nightclubs or um, entertainment spheres. I mean, I think it's funny that I can't personally think of a singular, solely Chinese-based nightclub. In California. In California that I can think of. No. And you have all this Chinese people. I'm not saying there has to be 10 of them, but I can't really think. I know there's bars that are more Chinese, but I can't think of an actual nightclub that's solely Chinese. Like even for the immigrants, like the FOB yeah. International. And, and the truth is, I just don't think the party culture is that organized or that deep. Yeah. No, it's really not. And it is what it is. There's good and bad to that too, to be honest. Um, what do you think about the Asian and Latino population rising so much, Andrew? Obviously, like we had said before, the heritage populations of America that have typically defined the uh, polar ends of a, an Americana spectrum are white America and black America. California sort of exists outside of it. Like, like as it becomes increasingly Latino and increasingly Asian, right? Because the the Latinos can bring everything from Univision to reggaeton to all these things that are south of the border, whether, you know, it's Mexican or not. And then the Asians, they can tap into everything that's happening in the East, East, East. Right, right, right. So I think that that's really interesting where it's almost like that's where you see these more like cultural movements arising out of. It is California. I think yeah. specifically for these uh, newly arrived immigrant groups in the 1970s. Of course, I'm just speaking in terms of large numbers. So anyway, um, this guy said, uh, did you know that half the black American population still exists in the South? That's why everybody was like, oh, I was surprised that 4% that, that was so low for California. 50% of the American black population still resides in the South. Oh, that's interesting. That's a lot. Yeah. It makes sense though out of all those Southern states. Yeah. Um, ultimately, Andrew... We just went through some infographics, SF Chronicle. They didn't really put anything like have too much, too many crazy takeaways from it. But obviously, as the demographics change, inevitably, in my opinion, the culture will change, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, more people eating tacos, even just on a, like a shallow base level. I mean, there's a lot more Spanish being spoken. Uh, I do hope that there's also a lot of English being spoken and learned too, as well. And I think that's going to be helpful. But I think California is going to progressively look like feel like a different place than a lot of places in America. And I think that's a lot of Republicans usually use that as like a kind of a talking point, usually as like a, as a, as a reason to poke at Democrats. Right, like, like, you know, when I was growing up, it was like beach boys. And now I look down the street and all I see is carne asada and young rotoir in the air everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but I think California is an interesting place because it's so big climate's so good lots of great farmland super diverse has some really great industries tech's based out of there wine country entertainment uh tons of other things you know uh and so i don't know probably I think the best weather to be honest in america accepted as the best weather they actually uh yeah california actually has a me or at least la has a mediterranean climate so it's very great for like growing stuff that's why it's so good for wine and the bay is very temperate in the yeah. sense it's like it never too not hot never too cold hot, not when super it rains cold. it's not too rainy yeah 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 so i mean you know it's really really interesting man and uh, it's dope to see what everybody does i'd love to see even more collaboration you know i haven't seen a good Asian, oh, well, obviously you have the bulgogi tacos, Korean and Mexican, but I haven't seen a Chinese-Mexican collabo yet. Not that they don't work in the same spots sometimes, but I'm saying I haven't seen a product, right. like a, a culinary product emerge yet. Uh, something that really became uh, mainstream because everybody's using, doing bulgogi tacos now. We actually knew, I uh, met this Mexican chef who grew up in Mexicali and then he had, uh, uh, was it Adobada Cantonesa? But, uh, you know, it, it, really didn't, it didn't fully take off, but... You know, yeah, the, the 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 red Cantonese pork for tacos. Yeah, really good food in California, though. Amazing. Honestly, earth-shockingly good for the price, guys. Anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think of the changing demographics of California in the, uh, you know, in the comment section below. Let us know how you think things will change. And uh, check out the interactive, uh, interactive graph from the SF Chronicle. Until next time, we're the Hop Hop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.